come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Hey. Every Saturday night, the Freak Show magically appears on your podcast network. That's not entirely true. Is it magic? I'm pretty sure they just set out beer and we show up. Yeah. Like, that's how you draw us out. Something like that. That's you summon us? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, Google Play, YouTube, and more. Cast and uh, please, <laughs> I think we're still on there. Please give us a like or a thumbs up or a star rating on that. Uh, Just wherever like us you on Cast Roller. That's it. Forget everything <laughs> that doesn't else. Do anything. I want to see if that works. We want to uh, make our podcast more uh, visible to other fine folks like yourself, and that would really help us out. Or give us a review. We'll read your review on the air. We've got no problem with that. If yeah, you've got good things to yeah. say about us. Um, so it's a movie review podcast where we look at a movie that's chosen round robin by one of the Saturday night freak show irregulars uh, and then watch it. Talk about it for your listening pleasure. Who are these Internet radio superstars? Sean. Holly. Ryan. Welcome, Ryan. Thanks. And I'm uh, Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Colin. What did we watch tonight <laughs> in this movie that you chose? Good I didn't. Job. I didn't. Good I get that. Do that later, though. <laughs> <I hate you. laughs> Unless somebody else wants to yell at me. Um, uh, we watched 1972's "The Tombs." Oh no, no, sorry, not the. It's not just the, "Tombs no of the Blind Dead" uh, from Armando Armando D Armando Armando D Osorio. He. This is a. Uh, Yes. Spanish film. The famous Armando. You struggled through the title and the direction. I know. This is terrible. We're just getting off to a a rocking start. Um, Yeah. So it's a Spanish movie, but it's actually made in Lisbon, Portugal. Lisbon. uh, Because I think of some of the political things that were going on in Spain at the time. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about Euro horror, I think, a little Uh, bit. Yeah. We're going to get into that in a little bit. Subject I am uh, very. no, I'm lying. I'm sorry. We're well, gonna, you've seen some learn, Sean. Italian <laughs> horror films. Sure. Yes. Uh, so what else do we that. have in, in Euro horror films? There's not like a whole lot of like Greek horror movies. No. I've only seen one. One what Greek horror it? movie? I Island of Death was filmed in Greece. Oh, yeah. 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 Wait, is that the Boris Karloff? No. no the it's the, the exploitation movie where uh, actually it just got re-released too. But yeah, it's these to tourists terrorize some town in Greece. Oh. It's always tourists. Solid. It's always tourists. Never, yeah. well, and there's twists and turns. <laughs> oh. Unless it's someone harassing the tourists. That's the other. That's usually what happens. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, we're going to go backpack through Yugoslavia. There is something to that, right? I mean, that happens often in like Italian films and the Spanish films. I mean, but there's always the idea that the movie is going to start off with some kind of uh, like travel log. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. This is why you should come and visit our country because we have these scenic vistas, crumbling castles and big wide open countryside and pools at the hotels and, you know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Don't forget the pools. Mm, pools. Yeah. <laughs> pools <are great> <laughs> we love pools. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm, they're really selling. Yeah, for that. Yeah, I'm like, there. I want to go yeah. to Madrid or wherever they started. Was oh, that, that what pool. Maybe the famous they, pools of Madrid? Did they start in Madrid and they were going to Lisbon? Was that the uh, the idea in the movie I, by I'm train? Sure. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, we, we're not sure. It does yeah, say did, that did it, it say filmed. It, off? it just said filmed in Madrid and Lisbon. So we'll um, say they started in Madrid. They and said they, they were, were going to... towards the border. I don't know. Yeah, the, this they, they were by the Spanish border. They were by the Spanish border. So they had crossed over into Portugal at that yes. point. They so. mentioned Lisbon in uh, the uh, subtitles. This well, this is the so. thing. Like, right? Like, when you're in Europe, you can take a train and, like, just kind of go to all these different countries, that probably literally like, that's, everywhere. That's, within, yeah. Like, <laughs> that's what you do. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right. On vacation. Nobody drives. Nobody yeah. does anything else. Just when you go train. on vacation, it's everybody goes on vacation all the time. It's like going to another state for us. Yeah. Basically, yes. We go to Wisconsin over there. They're like, let's go to France for the day. Right. Like, that's what they do. You can just take the hovercraft. Some special. Yeah. <laughs> we go to the Dells. The, yeah. yeah. They go to the south of France. <laughs> right. Let's go we're, to wineries. We're doing this wrong. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, what's or are the, we doing it right? What's the like yeah. uh, uh, <laughs> defining characteristics of like the year? Because like the British horror movies don't like seem to fit into this. No, uh, mm-hmm. you know, like all the Hammer movies right. and stuff. That yeah, they don't fit into this kind of mold. I don't think. But the Italian films do. It seems like. I mean, you know, there's usually the idea that your protagonist is um, like. Uh, I was going to say like a stranger in a strange land at least, but like sometimes a foreigner, sometimes somebody from, you know, like they get like an international personality or star to, you know, be the lead. So they're already, you know, out of, out of uh, their element, but then, or in the case of this movie, you know, you've got vacationers from one uh, country going on vacation to another country or somehow wandering off the beaten track and uh, finding They're jumping off the, the beaten horror. track and just they, walking away jumping with off their... the beaten train in this case oh, there wasn't a whole lot of stuff making sense in the beginning of this movie that's why we don't know where they're going or the middle that's very the true <laughs> well some of that I wonder if it is like just like our, our unfamiliarity with the you know because I think this movie in particular was made for like a Spanish yeah or sorry like a, a, a European audience for sure yeah but I mean you still don't see people usually just jump off Trains for oh, no, we don't. Spanish <laughs> or no I mean, I don't hear about it very often. No, no, yeah. it could happen all the time for all we know. We got to go exploring. How else do you see the countryside? They don't have cars over there, apparently, in 1972, no. Sean. Horses, uh, horses, <laughs> and an galore. old train. <laughs> horses galore. Yeah. Horses, old train, boats, and boats. Also, boats. boats. Yeah. Yeah. People just live on boats. I assume that this was set in 1972. I mean, like, okay, so the uh, the, the political climate of the time was uh, that I think ha- you kind of have to take into account whenever you think of, like, especially Spanish horror, was that uh, General Franco, uh, Francis- Francisco? Francisco, there Francis- we go. Francisco. Franco, yeah. He came to power uh, in the 30s and was, like, kind of a silent ally of the Axis powers. And then he r- reigned over uh, uh, Spain in a totalitarian, you know, he was a military dictator for, until his death in 1975. So this movie, I think they said, you know, like, uh, was able to skirt some of the censorship issues that the Spanish film industry had by uh, being coming a co-production with another with Portugal. with Portugal. So it was like, okay, we're making a Portuguese movie. We're going to shoot in Portugal and we're making it for like worldwide distribution. So you're able to get away with, with more by doing it that way. It's Portuguese. Yep. But there was also like Franco said, you like, you have to speak uh, Castilian Spanish in uh, Spain. Like, you know, they wouldn't recognize any other. Yeah, there was a whole bunch of, yeah. Damn. Uh, yeah. It was a, uh, Apparently, an oppressive uh, regime to live under. Did you and, know this before we were going to watch this movie? Yeah, because okay. uh, you know, I mean, it always it comes up when you watch enough Spanish movies, and especially like people have gotten away from there and always talk about it. I thought for some reason that Franco was like thirties, forties. I didn't mm-hmm. realize until I looked into it that he was still around in the in the seventies. But uh, Guillermo del Toro, I think. Uh, Pan's Labyrinth, especially. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Devil's Backbone takes place during, uh, you know, the Spanish Civil War. And uh, that would have been during during Franco's reign also. So <clears throat> I think that other, uh, you know, like eventually like the Spanish horror cinema or Spanish cinema is like now experiencing like a cultural renaissance. Right. I mean, we had yeah. the rec movies. uh the orphanage. The orphanage. Yeah. Um, man, I just saw a good one this year, and I can't remember the title of it. What was it about? It was about this uh, woman who was like a real estate agent, and she had to go, and there was like this tenement building that she was like sneaking into with her boyfriend, and then it turns out that there was like this dude who lives in the basement or whatever. It was like it was a pretty good movie, you know. I can't remember the title. It was on Netflix. Most of them end up on uh, Netflix. Alex de Iglesia, I think the guy who did. Um, Last Circus and Witching and Bitching, and he's from Spain. So, I mean, there's like, there are a number of current Spanish uh, filmmakers making horror movies now. Um, but this movie, Tombs of the Blind Dead, was a, uh, and we will get to talk, uh, break down the plot of this, but I want to give you a couple little tidbits of interest uh, about the movie. Um, it was uh, imported here and cut by 20 minutes. So the English version, we watched the original uncut Spanish language version. Was all that out of the wandering around scene in the castle? Is that uh, where the 20 they, minutes came out? They, they could have just cut that, most of that out, and it would be the you same be, movie. You would think. You There's would think. a little bit of that, I think, is cut out. Most of Pedro is cut out, I think, like Pedro oh. and his girlfriend. Okay. Uh, 
also a good. Yeah, yeah. that's a thing you can, you can cut. cut. Yeah, you can yeah. cut. Yeah. But they take uh, they take out all the gore, all the nudity, and of which you know we're saying there's not a whole lot. But no. they took all that out because I think like at the time in 1972 in the, in in America, um, horror movies were still seen as movies for children. Like kids went to go see horror movies, and it was only I mean like in the 70s and early 1970s is kind of when the censorship uh, constraints opened up. And then you started to see movies like, you know, Hammers, Vampire Lovers, or, you know, where you got more TNA and horror movies and then the more graphic uh, gore. But I think at that time, they were still thinking that these were movies for kids. So they cut it down to be a PG rated movie. They also took the uh, expl- the, the flashback scene, the um, what actually, you know, the, the Templar stuff, and put that at the very beginning of the movie. Okay. So that's the first thing that you see in the American cut. And another tidbit, which is the weirdest thing that you're going to hear about this movie. Uh, really? So this is, yeah, this one, this one's oh. going to take the cake. And actually, we should have watched this. It's on this disc. Um, but there's an alternate opening to this movie where somehow the distributor tied, tried to tie this into uh, the Planet of the Apes series. Shut the fuck up. And so they right, retitled right. it, uh, the, what is it, Return, no. Return to Planet Ape, Revenge from Planet Ape. No, what? and Shut somehow up. explain, yeah, in no. like an opening crawl or something, they say that like the apes from the future like went back in time to try and change the past, and so are the, the knights <laughs> supposed to be apes, or, like yeah. dead apes. Imagine going to the drive-in, oh seeing this movie that starts with this, like, okay, this is another ape movie, and then seeing this movie and going like those must be apes that's what wonderful what's happening we're the fucking monkeys <laughs> yeah. yeah well uh, they had chin well, hair they so had maybe right. was, so they were like, like right. zombie and zombie they were riding the horses monkeys, zombie monkey people okay. wow and no. I mean, I guess the the hands they were very sure, proud right. of could be <laughs> little monkey hands that were right. everywhere this is weird <laughs> this is fucking weird that's yeah, weird yeah. Yeah. yeah what uh, huh. what <laughs> Wow. Whose idea was this? Uh, some distributor trying to cash in and make some money, right? That's so, my guess. Can so you imagine you... that meeting? Okay, go with me on this. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> right, guys. I watched this movie. These... Planet of the Apes. Just put it out there. These weird mummy demon <laughs> ghost things yep. kind of look like monkeys. Okay. <laughs> so what we're going to do, make it about monkeys. <laughs> we can cash on in on the monkey market, which is big right now. Monkeys. Big monkey yeah. market. But wait, Howard. How do we convince people that this is a Planet of the oh, Apes I got movie? It. Oh, I got oh. it. Text crawl. <laughs> y'all, y'all ever seen Star Wars? Text crawl. Damn it, Preskin, you're Sold. a genius. Sold. Yep. That's probably how it went, too. Probably. It's the weirdest thing. After this, we'll have to watch no, just a, to we, get We cut out a few. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's great. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Woo. Let's do it. And anyway, he runs I'm, off naked, and he's just like, "Where's where's John anyway, I'm, I'm going? <laughs> I'm late to the strip club, so I gotta go. Yeah. So you guys do that. You guys do that. Here's Text crawl. Money. Got it. Whatever. Yeah. That's what you need? Yeah. Okay. I don't know how much money it made on that run, but because uh, <laughs> all the posters run. I've seen are you know in, in English, "Tombs of the Blind Dead." Oh, wonderful. So apes movie. That's cool. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. What else? Maybe that was on its re-release. I don't know. The do apes you, things were really big in the seventies. Yeah. Yeah. How do you cut out Pedro and the girlfriend from like the ending of this movie? I see cutting out Pedro. Well, I think they're still there. They just cut out some of the scenes that they're involved. I can imagine one that they would cut out. Yeah, I think one is one. There's one that comes to mind. Yeah, they cut that one. That would probably be cut out. Yeah, but I think like a lot of the opening scenes where you introduced to them, you know, stuff like the like that. And so in the middle of this movie, in the other cut, a guy with a. M- ridiculous mustache and that hair just shows up and like I am Pedro. Also, mm-hmm. giant pit stings. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's hot. It's hot. Oh, it's hot. It in, is, uh, yeah, it is. Portugal. But the other guy was wearing a jacket. Wearing a jacket. The whole time. Yeah. 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 Fuck that. Everybody who's listening well, look to this, how tan if, he if, is. You know what? He lives in the sun. Roger. Like, yeah, Roger. It doesn't bother him. He's like, I'm cool. Yeah. We got to tell people what this is about because yes. I'm assuming most of you listening have not seen mm. this movie. That's a safe uh, assumption. Yeah. Safe assumption. Uh, so in- encapsulated, it's a movie about undead, uh, Templar. Well, they never actually say that. They never say they're, they're just they're knights. knights. Yeah. yeah. But they're clearly like Knights of the Crusade. They're the Templar. Something, knight. yes. They have the mythology of the, the Templars, yes. which I guess we'll get into that yeah, as we go too. but, and they ex- come back. They're the excommunicated for their Satan worshiping. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So they're the. They're the Knights Templar, because I think the actual story with the Templar Knights is that uh, they amassed enough of uh, like influence and reputation through the Crusades and like brought home all this loot that they were Did able they to become their own thing. They established mm-hmm. these power bases. I think the church. Well, this is the 
you know, either they're heroes or they're villains. Or they live long enough to become the villains. Yeah. And, you know, it depends <laughs> on what, what story you subscribe to. But when, wherever they're villains, which I guess we'll talk about because we're going toward this movie, is that they cha- had power to challenge the church. And the church oh, yeah. didn't like that and basically said that they were all Satan worshipers. And then uh, they were uh, on a Friday the 13th, which is where we get that. That's yeah. why it's unlucky. Yeah. Right. Is because that's the day that, like, everybody wrote, you know, they... I think in the various places that they were in the world in their little bases, that's when order know, the, 66 happened yeah, and they just killed everybody. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. Yeah. <clears throat> Makes sense. And this was 13th century Europe. So yeah. Coming back from the crusades, okay. Templar Knights. Now in this movie, history. which basically has the, I guess that kind of thing, the witchcraft they brought back from Egypt, you know, because they were over in the Holy Land and they yeah. came back to Lisbon where they established a, a base and then uh, they were into blood drinking, mm. the blood of virgins. Blood of virgins. To uh, if, if you're going to drink yeah. blood, it's blood the, of virgins it's is the, the best. Sweetest it's blood. the best kind. Yeah. And somehow just that by itself, drinking blood. Well, that's always been a thing, I guess, with like vampires and, yeah. you know, the idea that somehow blood magic will extend your life. You can have eternal yes. life. But it's satanic. It keeps and showing up. Well, yes. Punished. So what happened to them? These? Though some would say that, you know, the disciples drink blood, technically. <laughs> Bam. Yeah. So, I mean, you know. Well, yeah, but it's a that. foul inversion of that. I think well, is right. why that, yeah. So like Dracula comes back in three days. Christ was dead for three days. The whole Did inversion Dracula of that. back in three days? I think so. Or not Dracula, days? but is the people, he bites them, and then it takes like three uh, days to yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. come back victims. Yep. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And so Dracula. these guys. These guys. Yeah. This movie. In this, this movie. This movie. We did a movie. We okay. watched it. Okay. So we'll, we'll talk about this movie. We experienced it. Do you want to talk about the, the knights themselves? or uh, well, Let's start with our like main characters. Okay. Who, who, where they're at when we meet them. All right, we've got. Introduce one. They're at a beach. Yeah. They are at a, a pool. A beach, a pool, the beach uh, pool. Mm, pool. One of the beautiful Those pools. Those pools, I tell you, <laughs> that's lots where of showers in. around. There, there are lots of showers. <laughs> we meet uh, Bet, uh, Virginia, 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 Virginia. 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 <laughs> she is Virginia. Virginia. Yep, and Roger. And Roger. And Roger. Roger. <laughs> well, Roger introduces himself. That's, That's the best me. intro. He's like, that is me. Hi, I am Roger. Me. Well, right, let so, me put on this awesome robe. <laughs> it's got fucking big blue dots well, on it. when you it's go amazing. on vacation in Europe, you know, I mean, you got to take your whole kit with you, which includes the true. awesome robe, the, uh, you know, explorer jacket. Yeah. I the, like how the robes, like, they went down to pretty much crotch level, and that was it. They're just like, oh, I yeah. only need to be dry from here. Yeah. Just keeping the sun off you. This is yeah. like beating my legs. You still have to have the goods accessible. Yes. That's legs. the idea. The sex. The sex is visible. Mm-hmm. Because there's lots of sex happening in, in Spain. In well, Europe. Not, it was for Roger. Not, I don't, not to Roger, apparently. Not that we saw. But well, was, yeah, but he's in a situation where, like, I mean, well, he, this isn't our main character, but we meet this guy, and he's friends with Virginia. Friends. Virginia. I'm saying in quotes. She tells uh, Bet at the pool that, you know, I'm kind of seeing this guy, but it's not serious. Yes. Yeah. And Roger then invites Bet to, like, well, why don't you come with us yeah, on our. And bring a friend. <laughs> yeah. And then, I, I don't, don't know. have Guy, friends. girl, I don't have a preference. <laughs> Just bring, bring a friend. friend. Yeah. Whatever. We need another one. Very insistent is Roger. Well, he has a thing for Bet, but it's like, what, what about poor Virginia there? Virginia. Say it right, please. Virginia. Thank you. Virginia. 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 Uh, we know this because yeah. they shout that name often. A thousand yes. times. Yes. Hello? Virginia? Virginia? <laughs> Virginia, is that you? <laughs> But they end up on this train, uh, you know, that's going to take them to, we assume, Lisbon. And we find out that uh, Bet and Virginia, well, not only is Virginia upset that Bet has tagged along, mm-hmm. but also we find out that when they were in school together, they may have learned a little bit about the birds and the bees. They learned about the world together. <laughs> about the yeah. world, yes. which makes them both. No, that makes Virginia more uncomfortable. Because you're Virginia. saying, like, why the fuck? Because Virginia then jumps off the yeah, fucking she train. She leaves the fucking train. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. first, first she does try to pay the guy to stop said train. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. But he's, then when he's like, oh, no, there's nowhere I can't no, go can't anywhere. Uh, uh, she just decides, yeah, fuck it. I'm jumping. I'm yeah. done. This I don't was, care. Uh, I'm, I'm good. This I'm may out. seem extreme. It feels extreme. It feels a little intense. Uh, it's an ex- extreme reaction. 
She's in a very awkward situation. She is. Where the guy that she's with is like trying to get chummy with her. Pulling Bet onto his lap. Yeah, it's a little awkward. It is a little. He goes for it. A little bit. So literally both the people she may or may not have had sex with at some time are now going to bone. I don't know. I mean, it seems like that's what, that's what that's what I'm saying. Right. Her yeah. jumping off the it. train doesn't seem this extreme. To me. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, fuck it. I want to get out of I'm here. Done. And she's like, I'm yeah. going for that creepy old castle on the hill. You really got to have like negative feelings about what is happening to you to just jump, jump off, a train off a train in the middle of nowhere. Like, but maybe, There's a castle. I'll be fine. Maybe they're more adventurous uh, type, the uh, the the Spanish. <sighs> they were conquistadors. Well, I mean, that's very true, but there's <laughs> there's adventurous and there's dumb. And she well, was this is a dumb. horror movie. Well, I mean, she she could have also just well, moved, yeah. like, compartments. Uh, like, you know that. what? I'm going to go sit <laughs> in the other train car. <laughs> I'm going to do that. There's, uh-huh. there's, like, three of them on this. I'm going yeah. up there. I'm yeah. going to sit with the coal. Right. I'm going to do something. I'm not going to jump off the train. Then but we wouldn't does. have a movie, I, Sean. I mean, you can say that about every movie. <laughs> well, she did try to go out the back of the train, and they followed her. So, she just, so that's when she's like, alone. fuck this. You keep following me. I'm jumping off this goddamn train. That's when train. we had the smoke flashback. Smoke flashback. Smoke which was flashback. wonderful. I imagine that it was just like Roger standing there going, <sighs> smoking a lot, going, <sighs> <laughs> yeah, and then we got. I the hope flashback. that's what it was. It's a nice misty, <laughs> like a smoky it flashback. Is. It's like, it's, All right, now they smoke. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I right, flashback. Well, I was worried about that when they first got on the train and the window was open, and like, yeah. I'm like who the fuck is smoking Fear on the smoky. train? Yeah, and then it's just the the steam, I guess, from the train. Like, I was not through the window. No, I thought she was like turned away smoking. Like, <laughs> I thought she was too. <sighs> like then a I thought, chimney. I thought the train was on fire. <laughs> That yeah. was a lot of smoke. Yeah. I mean, coal. Like, this doesn't look healthy for anybody. No, not at all. Like, uh, shovel the coal in there. But then the, s- the smoke eventually invades there. The, the, it, so it's the steam. It's a nice little segue. Steam fills up the screen between the two women, and then oh, it goes to the flashback. Ah. It's a steamy scene. I yeah. steamy. Ah. Yeah. And there's steam constantly going through the smoke. We're saying yeah, smoke, but it was wrong. It was steam. That's it's it's a yeah. steam engine. <laughs> it was, it and it was going through heat. tunnels. No, that never actually happened. Yeah. No, I thought you were trying to make another metaphor. That's there. North by Northwest. But, that actually happened. Yeah. At the end of the movie. It's fantastic. Uh, so, ghost so lesbians. Castle. Right. Lesbians. Ghost we're, of the Castle. So lesbian flashback. flashback. Right. Lesbian flashback. Virginia. 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 And so she goes off to explore this place called Berzano, which the uh, conductors of the train are like, we should not go here. And I believe, uh, you know, basically all the locals throughout the movie will regard this place with fear and suspicion. Yeah. For the, the this happens like five times with the conductors of the train. It's like, yeah. no, no. Let the police. <laughs> we will be fine. We keep going. Do not stop. Go. Do not stop, as the young son always wants to stop. Which, I mean, as well, we no, the do son, end up finding out. The son that wants is a to help people. Bad idea. This father was right. He's like, we don't stop this train. Because uh-huh. he's old and he remembers the old country. Yeah. And oh, these yeah. young people don't understand like the oh. ways of the old I thought he thing. was just being a dick, but no, he's, he's, he's legit. Uh, yeah. He's, he's, he's Shouldn't stop the right. train. Shouldn't stop the train. Yeah. I'd be pissed at my son. Because it turns out that the Brizano, which I'm trying Brizano. to figure out, they, they refer to as an abbey. It's also referred to as a house. Yeah. Unless we're talking about a certain room in the like. I know, think structure. the abbey was just a separate structure within the castle. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it was like, like a, a like you could, you know, take this as like a city or a town from kind a different, I, very small. I, mean, I, I think it's just it's like a castle layout. Right. So, you know, it's got like a big building here. It's got its little church over here mm-hmm. and it's got its. Cool satanic cemetery over here. <laughs> yes, yeah. with uh, onks. With apparently. onks. There's onks everywhere. Egyptian, Egyptian satanic cemetery. It's cool. Yep, because the Templars brought that back with them from the aforementioned Egypt, and where they learned their secret of their dark yeah. immortality. Dark yes, indeed. And so, Berhinia just she go, just, just decides, goes off. You know what? That looks cool. I'm gonna like stay that. in this castle. Let me just uh, put dudes out. or lesbians there. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. I'm gonna That's hang out go. there. Yeah. Well, this is what I was kind of like. Oh, I'm gonna wander okay. for 20 minutes. Of <laughs> 20 silence. minutes. <laughs> I wish they had just stayed with her for the hour trip it had taken her to get to that castle. That would have made it worth it. This dead silence for that long. Mm-hmm. I'm up for that. But she does wander around that castle for 20 minutes, checking it out. Yeah. Hello, knocking, calling out. Just why? I mean, I know she's got nowhere else to go at this point, but <sighs> but the fact that uh, Roger and Bet never like. 
stopped the train or came back or did anything. No. They're just assuming, okay, she's pissed. I suppose we're we're assuming that she's, they're assuming this because we don't actually see it. Well, yeah, and the next time we see them, they're like, well, she did not return. Yeah, yeah. Like they, she never made it to the hotel. Oh. What? Well, no shit, she walked away. Yeah, and 40 miles away or whatever the fuck yeah. in this town. Right. Or it's more than that because they we have to talk to somebody two more hours afterwards, afterwards, but yeah. I figure she would have been here. Made it by now. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's been four days. But Virginia runs afoul of the Oberenia. blind dead. So why are they blind? Because their eyes got eaten by crows. They were hung from trees and they're for their punishment of Satan stuff. Because they used to <laughs> kidnap virgins and drink their blood. And this mythology is not terrible. No, I the story is there. <laughs> it is just not well executed sometimes. All the pieces are there. They're the all pieces there. are there. Yeah. I like the satanic cool knights. Those are pretty badass. Yes. Horse what riding zombies like? are cool. Yeah. Oh, what, what do they look like? You got to well, well, theater they, of the mind They're here. dead, what? blind. They're dead and blind. They have skull, they come out of skull. Yeah. <laughs> they have skullish <laughs> faces. <laughs> they do. I with, like yeah. um, look. They're, they're like very wispy dirty. hair. That's yeah. why they could they're, have been undead yeah. monkeys riding right, right. horses. Very true. And they these tattered, like, tattered robes, robes and cloaks and everything. Like, yeah. I like the design of them. is very cool. They look a little lo- a little more mummy-esque than zombie-esque. Yeah. I would say yeah. so. They wear they are oven mitts. F- yeah, they do. <laughs> they have a lot of shiny oven metallic oven mitts. <laughs> but I noticed in the flashback, they were wearing those mitts. Did you yes, notice? Yeah. So yeah. it's like, uh, oh, I they're guess, night like, gloves. <laughs> yeah. They're not <laughs> oven mitts. <laughs> Damn. To protect their hands when they're fighting, like sword fighting. I right, assume it's like a chain mail glove. Sure, yeah, yeah something like that. That didn't guess. deteriorate over yeah. the five, six hundred years right. or nope. whatever. Since. And uh, very uh, mummified hands. Mm. That they walk around like, with T-Rex. Right, there's T-Rex no more than hands. three mummified yeah. hands in the prop shop at this point. They use the one many times when they're opening crypts to crawl out of. Yeah. And one of them's don't animatronic. Know. It like reached in and grabbed the, uh, the, she put a bolt over the door and right. it reaches in and picks it up. It was the one animatronic. Yeah, well, yeah. The other ones were just like, uh, yeah, the other ones were just carved wooden sticks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. basically, yes. And they are blind, but apparently their hearing apparatus is still functioning because this is how the, like blind den, the blind dead hunt you is uh, whenever you make a sound. What? The okay. what? Don't <laughs> yeah. breathe. Obviously, ripped this movie. Uh, <laughs> clearly, obviously, clearly. Yeah. So okay, when turkey baser and all. <laughs> oh, that was an awkward scene in this movie. Oh, jeez. Oh, God. That turkey Does that make Woo. Pedro the turkey buster? I think so. I think so. I think that's where that is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll get to that, uh, dear oh. listener. You were saying, Holly. Was I? Ah. Yeah. Were you going to talk about monk chanting? I, no, I, no, I was going to ask a, a question, a kind of a continuity question. Um, so... When the when the knights are hung, they get their eyes pecked out after they're already dead, right? Yes. yes. So why are they blind ghosts? They weren't blind when they died. True that. It's a curse, maybe? That it the- feels like, um, well, the logic I was just going to go for does not make sense. There you go. Um, I don't think we should try to apply logic to this film. <laughs> Probably not. That's fair, right? I was going to say, it still <laughs> seems like they have their corporal bodies that they come back as. Yeah. But who's to say their eyes wouldn't have melted away over the years anyway. Yeah. So why should they be blind? I don't know. They shouldn't be blind. But maybe they would because be blind. Because Tombs of the Blind Dead sounds badass. Tombs of the Dead is not as good <laughs> it's as not Tombs as bad of the Blind Dead. As Tombs of the Blind Dead. Yes. This is very true. You're just like, oh, that automatically raises a question. Why are they blind? Yeah. And then the guy was just like, all right, how am I going to make these fucking ghosts blind? Mm-hmm. Eyes pecked out by crows. There sounds it is. pretty cool, too. There it is. Well, it so. does. And they have, like, the ghost horses that immediately enforce them to ride in slow motion whenever they show up out of nowhere. I like the idea. Ghost horses are buried somewhere (laughs) nearby in the cemetery, I assume, and just, like, No, I imagine they're just, like, they just, uh, you know, come to be as they're galloping towards. I want to point out that Lord of the Rings was written... Before this movie came out, but there are, they there's also a lot of motion, shared. Don't they? Yeah, there's a, it was even in the the animated mm-hmm. one, I think. But yeah. there's a bunch of uh, the Nazgul uh, imagery here yeah. of cloaked guys and horses yes. chasing Very after so. young maidens yeah. in uh, fields and whatever. Fun fact: horses still had eyes, <laughs> not blind. 
Very true. <laughs> not <laughs> not oh, shit. Well, that would explain zombified. a whole lot. Just covered up a lot. Yeah. How did they get where they were going? Because the horses, horses knew where they were can going. See. That's what I was thinking. I'm just like, oh, how did they? Oh, the horses. Horses, the horses can see. They can see. Yeah. They're leading them. Well, I'm glad there's logic there. <laughs> we tr- we're, tr- I mean, we're trying to apply something. Yeah, That's I think cool. it checks out. What? It's a horror movie. It's I'm just she to gets it. she gets far enough away where they shouldn't be able to hear her when she's running away. Maybe, but, but the, the horses, horses can see. I guess. Do horses, horses just run after things that they see? No. Here's the logic they continuity thing that, that's harder to get past is Virginia becomes Gotta the be first right. victim of the blind dead. Very true. Yeah. After which she, they basically just kind but, of leech but onto first, her. But <laughs> let's let's talk about how she just decides to make a fire. That this is an okay get naked place. And oh, change into her change pajamas. Change into her pajamas in yeah. the middle of nowhere. Well, because you and know, then just hang out with her radio for yeah. a while. And read a book. Yeah. And eat her Mentos or whatever. Like it, like smoke a did, cigarette. Yeah. Like it didn't look like a bad night. I know. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. <laughs> right? Until right. they fine. showed up. The, it was fine. Yeah. And you know, if you didn't pan out and see that you're in a decaying, crumbling castle. <laughs> yeah, there's I that. I mean, there's fire. Yeah, yeah. Just what, else, I mean, what else do you really need? But that's why I'm like, Some I jazz. can't tell like what time of day jazz. it is. Why, when no, she gets they, there, she's just like, fuck it, I guess it's not an actual town, so I'm just going to camp here, and then I will go somewhere else tomorrow when I wake up. So I got my bedroll with me and all the comforts of home, so yeah. I'm just going to rough it. She have yeah. food? That's what I was wondering about. Is like, where's she, what's she gonna eat? She's just eating mints. She had to choose your own adventure book. Is that what happened? She, yeah, she, 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 she was like, ah, <laughs> fuck this. I need to see what happens at the end. That was wonderful. But she arouses the attention of the blind dead, who then well, slowly does she arouse her, or do they just do that every night? I it think seems it's like be- they just do it every. night. I think they do it yeah. every night. You don't think it's because she's there? No, I think they no. do it every night. I think they congregate and they're like, oh, what's that jazz music? There's someone here, you know. Because they, yeah. they, they said, like, their legend is that they wake up and hunt. Yeah. yeah. So night I think some nights they don't get anything. And some nights there's just people there. So I think they do that every night. That's, that's why, why I like the out. idea that they are coming back and replacing the tombstones every night mm-hmm. <laughs> over them as they go to sleep. It's like tucking themselves yeah, in. Because like, that would mean that, yeah, it's all nicely, you know, they got to move the slate off the top. To oh, get out of the Frank, ground. I am tired. Can you just put this on top of me when I get inside? I don't want to do this tonight. Yeah, maybe yeah, the ones who live in a hole it. or whatever oh, in the wall. What about they... the ones that are like actually buried underground? Yeah, they have to like cover themselves. That, up that's where dirt. we cut to the half hour of the skeletons just digging a hole. Just see, that's what I'm thinking. It's when they are when there's no, it's a the person horses kicking dirt on them. There we go. When there's a person in the vicinity, that's when they wake up. Right? Uh, I don't. Know. I don't know. I just. I don't know. But what is odd about this? <laughs> what is odd about this, Colin? Well, about uh, the, we were saying the logic issue uh, that Virginia, who has become a victim of the blind dead, then gets transported to the morgue where there's the world's creepiest morgue attendant. The best <laughs> part oh. of the movie. Oh, Love that guy. <laughs> Introduced playing with the frog? Or was that later? No. No, no. Introduced getting ready to pull the I, sheet yeah, looking creepy as shit. Yeah. <laughs> just <He's> so, <laughs> he loves his job. He's just. He was so excited for them to ID uh, that body. Yeah. And he purposely showed him the wrong body. Yeah. <laughs> he, he did. But that's that's a great little, like, a little character thing for that guy. He didn't have to do that. He could just be, you know, like a solemn attendant. Just like, oh, he's, he's dead. Yeah. Look. Okay, there was no... Of- <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, there was no reason for him to be that creepy. No, and that was wonderful. Great. Yeah, I but what's just... weird is we found out he's not the creepiest person in that no, morgue when they drop off the body. No, he's not. <laughs> yeah. oh because God. then the That's greatest line in the movie is the two autopsy technician Orderlies, corners, whatever yeah. they are, yeah. drop off the body and are just like, oh, so what happened to her? Oh, she was tortured by being bitten and because she was asking for it. And this one was hot, too. And it was like, yeah. what? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. yeah. How do really you have? They have opinions. Yeah. Apparently. Hard opinions on people. You wear shorts out in uh, the Spanish countryside. You are asking to be bitten by zombies. Yeah. That's apparently. the message, right? Apparently. Like, That's it. Yeah. 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 Wow, so, yeah, that's an that's, interesting. So, are we that attributing that to it's a shame. the? She's hot. She was ugly. Would have been okay. But do you attribute <laughs> that, is, that to well, the culture? Well, then she wouldn't have been asking for it. In that's true. Span- that's true. In Spain at the time, or like it's a or political it's just thing. Seventies. Yeah, it's I just the seventies. This is everywhere. Know. Attribute I don't. that to Haven't, Spain. Haven't we established Not already America. that the seventies yeah. is kind of just rapey in general? Anyway, I like, mean, 
It's more people did, have, happened in the 70s. people did have rapey mustaches. Yeah, they did. It's very 70s. true, as we'll learn later in this movie. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, so uh, bad. Also, a well, we're building mustache. to it like there, there's a rape in the movie. Am I blowing this? <laughs> oh, there's a rape God. in the movie. We were trying to dance around the subject. I know, but you're building it up right like this it. is the centerpiece of the movie. I, do that. <laughs> I don't know. I think the I creepy Morgan thing whole... was the centerpiece of the movie. <laughs> I mean, that's, it was yeah, good, not the centerpiece. It's a highlight. Not the centerpiece. It shut the movie down, but not the centerpiece. Everything came to a screeching halt for a, a good old-fashioned rape. Kind of did. <laughs> yeah, it did some kind of stuff. came them. out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. 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 There's a character named Pedro who is... Uh, well, smuggler. he's Smuggler. Yeah, he's a smuggler. A modest but smuggler. Mo- modest right, smuggler. Right, just to make a living. <laughs> the police are attributing the attacks that have happened in this area to him and his gang of smugglers. Yes. Which, that makes sense, I sure. suppose. Sure. It's like, there is yeah. no yeah. blind dead. If you're not going to believe the blind dead... It's these guys using the legend to keep people away so they can conduct their nefarious Makes business. Sense. business yes. <clears throat> but um, Pedro has this uh, very jealous girlfriend, kept woman, whatever the hell she some, is. Some sort of lady. <laughs> yeah. She appears to possibly be a lady of the night. Yeah. I mean, yes. She asks for it. She quite does. Literally. Yeah. <laughs> quite literally. <laughs> but then, not from Pedro. No, she wants it from Pedro. She wants it from. I think she just she's looking. To but I think that's get it. she wants it from Pedro. But she's jealous because uh, our heroes Roger and Bet enlist the help of Pedro and the woman. Yeah, I don't woman. think they ever say her name. No, and I'm not entirely sure what what exactly how road? they're supposed to be helping because he's got a boat or something. I We're just going to go to the castle because. And try to- Figure it out. I think they're there to wait and see who is actually showing up. I think so, up. too, because the police suspect Pedro in this business. Yep. So he's like, you come with me and we'll see if there is anything to this. If anybody else shows up, we'll I think it's it kind out. of to clear Pedro's. It's like, well, yeah. you come with me. So I know he's probably wondering. You. He's probably wondering, well, it's not me. They think it's right. me. Who the fuck we'll is it? Who's on my who turf? Is. Yeah. So they bring Pedro. They don't say that, but I think that's what they were going they for. Don't say much. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the easiest way to connect those dots. I think it's so. Yeah. That's the way it seems. Yeah. Because when they get there, because that's why I'm like, okay, are they on a stakeout or what is actually happening here? Like the, it doesn't feel like a stakeout because the girl's like, oh, we need to get some reefer so we can have a party. Well, that's and what she wants. Yeah. Everybody else wants a stakeout. And she's just like, hey, let's liven it up a little bit. Hey. Yeah. So it's not like a serious, like, we're waiting for, I think Roger and Bet are in for, like, the, you know, yeah. they want to know what happened wanna, to their friends. Yes, yeah. yeah, so they yeah. are the Richard Dreyfus and Rosie O'Donnell of this movie. Yeah. <clears throat> that's a, that's a. But also, well, oh, this is happening. <laughs> that's a, just why did that. the one girl come back? <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Holly. Thank you, someone got that. <laughs> Wait, that's what I want to know. Well, that was what I was going toward earlier yeah. with the, this why, is the continuity thing. Why does, what's her, Virginia. Virginia. Yeah. Why does she come back as a zombie spoiler no okay well i mean she yeah. gets right. but but nobody else does yeah <laughs> well, we don't why else? not who else do we see they don't show anyone else again and but why <laughs> why just her well i mean she happens early enough in the movie where she has time to come if back this is zombie. some sort of thing that happens this is in, thing. if this is it is the mythos happens. of the blind dead and that they bite you you come back it appears to be so yeah they should have done it again <laughs> <laughs> because so far it's just like oh my god this person's dead so you're saying this one happened, comes back so just because it happened once it's not like that's not enough no, to convince that's you true, that this is what they do because then also like when she comes back she comes back and attacks bet's assistant in the in the mannequin and shop the, and the more what was the point guy? of that scene to watch her get burned, I guess. I like, don't, there was no point in that scene. I don't think Bet even finds out about it in this movie. No, no. no. So there was no point to that. No, nobody else knows she comes back as a zombie, do they? Yeah. No. no. She kills the morgue no. attendant guy. They, or no, they do say that her body's missing. Because yeah. they say something like to Bet, like, oh, yeah, somebody came in and killed my morgue attendant and yeah. stole your friend's body. <laughs> it's obviously those smugglers or something. Yeah. Right, okay. And then, But then, yeah, then there's nothing else. There, yeah. Okay. It was mainly just to have the creepy murder hallway. Worth but it? But somehow. Worth it. To creepy, have the creepy, creepy murder, oh, yeah, yeah, murder yeah. hallway. I think great. the sequence itself works out pretty well. I think well, so, too. Because you've got this, like, the, the Euro horror blinking light. The blinking, like, blinking red light. Blinking mannequins. Yeah. Giant red light. Yeah. Mannequins looking creepy as shit. I mean, it was that's, yeah, that's great That's never scene. not 
pretty cool. Yeah, it's like your horror set piece, but it just I doesn't. That, don't know why it doesn't there. fit yeah. with the rest of the movie because no if all you but, have to yeah. do is die at the hands of the blind dead in order to gain some type of immortality, then like the blind dead got it kind of rough. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right. They right. had to go had through to a torture, lot. getting the, yeah, drinking yeah. blood of virgins and getting their eyeballs pecked out. I yeah. will say, of all the pointless scenes in this movie, that one was the most like. Okay, I'll let that go. Acceptable. Yeah. Like, yeah. All right. All right. It's like That's the fine. diversion cool. into, you know, the, your straight up horror, right. you know. Yeah. It's cool. We got the dude and there was a cool scene where people were set on fire and a cool effect mm-hmm. that you described as yeah. like shot through a mirror or what have you. Yeah, I think you, you have your fire actually off to the side and you're shooting through like a half mirror right. so that you can see the reflection of the fire, but you're looking through the glass okay. at your subject. Right. So and it makes you just it look line like. Line it up. Yeah. Like, look, they're on fire. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's it's one a, way of doing it. Worked yeah. for me. I know for cool. 1972. That's I don't see bad. that often. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, there was, I guess that's why there's a couple directorial flourishes in this that are like stand out as like, eh, it's interesting. You know, the smoke flashbacks. Yes. Uh, you know, the the flashing light, the fire effect, and then later. Uh, when uh, Bet's heartbeat is giving away her uh, position because she's trying to be quiet and the blind dead are out there. Mm-hmm. And there's this kind of like the camera zooms in on each, like it's doing the heartbeat, you know, visually yeah. with the zooms. Which I'm like, huh, that's kind of interesting. Cool. You know? I wish there had been more of that throughout the film, mm-hmm. except in these just moments. Because that was pretty cool. I like the camera work. Like if you're going to do it, like keep doing it throughout the thing. Yeah. But I think it's also where the ideas were like, oh, I have this idea. We're going to do it. Yeah, we will zoom in quickly and then do it again. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're the uh, Pedro, his girlfriend, Roger, and Bet return to the Abbey to now solve the mystery of what happened to Virginia. 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 Mm. And Pedro's going to go for a walk. (laughs) And they, yeah, there's a whole, they, they there's a whole confusion. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. The scene sense. is confusing. No, it was totally fine. Confusing. I don't know where you people were. He's like, fuck it. You got like, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm going to go for a walk. And then he says to bet, do you want to go for a walk at that point? Because the other girl is assuming that like everybody gets with everybody because yeah. it's Spain in the summertime in 1972. And apparently they do. <laughs> so she's immediately like, oh, he gonna- just basically asked this other girl to go with him when he knows that I want to be with him. So she's like, I'm going to try and seduce Roger. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> so that's what's happening. I, I get that's what's happening, but it's not a, like a clear, concise, like they ramble through that scene until we just end up. Would it have been better without the subtitles, Sean? It was just I awkward. Mean, it was just well, no yeah, it's awkward, awkward, but it's, in the movie. it's just very like awkward. Yeah, but it's, it's I think strange. it's supposed yeah. to be it awkward too, because of the way that It feels like it takes they're... too long to get to that point. It could have just been like, I'm going to go for a walk. Would you like to come? Yeah, yeah, but it's maybe. the hidden animosities or whatever between the characters are coming out in those moments. I guess so. Uh, gotta have ten- yeah, gotta I don't have, think uh, it flows. It's the sexual gotta, There's got to be friction. <laughs> sure. We'll go All right. Wait. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, and so then uh, Pablo, what's his name? Pedro. 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 Like wanders outside, and we find out that uh, Bet is actually a virgin. That mm. she has been untouched by a man because they make her squeamish. Yeah, or because so obviously she's we've seen a the lesbian? past. You were yeah. actually asking, like, is this lesbian thing going to come back? And I'm like, oh shit, it did. The, the but, lesbian, but, but, but not in like, a good way. Follow, yeah, not, not in a good not way. In a good they way, didn't follow it up with anything. No, but you nothing know, is followed up in this movie. In that moment, I guess you know her state of mind, even though you know because we've seen this thing earlier. But then like, why was oh. she, like, vibing on Roger real hard? I think they were, I think she was, I'm not saying this was executed properly, but I think she was just kind of, like, being playful, like, just kind of joking, and he was the one that was, like, taking okay. it seriously. Okay. She also says that she does this at the last moment. With That's Matt. true. That's she true. Did she did say, she did say that. that. So, yeah. everything's so it's, like, normal for her. She she to wants to get with a dude right. but until... When Yes. Then she's like, no. Yeah. I don't want she it. always she has that she, when she gets to that point. She's like, no, I cannot do it. Anybody because can. because something happened when she was a child. But they never say. Yeah. What. They never I say what. They never say yeah. what. What? Nah, but Pedro <laughs> seems to take this as not Pedro. Is it Pedro? Yeah, Pedro. It is Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> takes this as like an opportunity to cure her of this problem forcefully, and then rapes her. And it's like, 
It's a full on like rape. Yeah. That's a rape scene. Full on. Yeah. Which, granted, nowadays you don't see this enough to be accustomed to it. And I'm not saying that that's a necessarily a good thing, but it feels like I've seen enough of these movies where it doesn't like shut the movie down. It's like right. it's just part and parcel for the course of '70s or it Euro makes sense cinema. Within context, maybe, maybe not, but maybe it should make context within the movie that you're watching. Well, I think that is what's happening. Like that's what the movie's explanation of his character is. Sure. And then because of that, then he gets punished immediately afterwards. And the blind dead come and eat him. I guess he doesn't have so. to just be punished because he's a fucking smuggler. Like we already don't like no, him. But I think a smuggler but smugglers like, can be good people. Yeah, like, because you're flaunting. Don't even Look say Han. Han Solo. Don't even say yeah. it. Look at yeah. Han Solo. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say Han Solo. I was yeah. actually gonna go with Captain Malcolm Reynolds from Firefly. See. Well, there you go. He's pretty charming. But my biggest <laughs> question. But he hasn't committed a, a, like a, a sin, you know, like by being a smuggler. Sure. Of course, I don't think that this where I'm going doesn't work because we're not saying that Virginia committed a sin to, you know, the slasher movie. Sin right. equals death formula. But the thing is, though, like the whole point of like the knights at the beginning was that they needed a virgin to sacrifice and drink her blood. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, you come across and you find out that Berhinia is, in fact, a virgin. Bet. Not Berhinia. Oh, Bet. I'm sorry. I'm Bet. backwards. Bet is a virgin. Yeah. That, like, you're hoping, like, oh, this could play into the this story. This is going to do something. This could do something. Mm-hmm. Like, she is a virgin. This is, like, a reason for the knights to be going after her specifically. Oh, nope. It's just a reason for rape, apparently. It's just a reason yeah. for rape at this point. It is. Like, there's, like, it could have been. They could have done the story. something. They could have done something with that. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing out of that. We just Mm-mm. get a rape scene out of that. Yeah. Like this, An it was like they rape weren't scene. like they didn't feel the need to do that. They didn't think of it. What have you? But yeah. it feels like they could have like connected a story here or made something out of it, and they did not at all. Yeah, you're probably right. It could have, it could have been better at that point. Yeah. And yeah. It, I'm not saying it forgives a storyline like that, but it could have connected it all more. Yeah. yeah, it is just unusual. But again, like I said, I can't tell if it's unusual from us and watching it in the 2017. Sure. Or, you know, if if the Spanish cinema of the 1970s right, was like, why, was like why, why, why is the rape? What, yeah. the, what is going on? Yeah, because like we established before, <laughs> there's a lot of rape going on in, in 70s that's, that's movies. That's how they 60s, spoke, yeah. 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 That was that's, that's what no, they said. That was your accent. Spanish <laughs> accent? Yeah, they just like, hey, what the, what's the rape? What is, what's with the rape? Yeah, what's we're saying explain? morally, though, morally rape is bad uh, whenever it occurs. I just want to make that. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, we're not clear. It is yeah, not condoned. It's, no, it's, not condoned by the Saturday Night Free Show. No, it's... Like Wait. it shut it, like it. We were pretty vocal throughout this entire movie. It was like we were pretty quiet for the next five minutes. Well, because you don't like, expect uh, to no. see it, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. At first, it was okay. Girl wants to go out, get some. Good, 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 good for, for you. Good for you. Go. Good, yeah. good for if, Pedro. If that's, whatever if that's what you want, go for it. You do and, you. You know. Right. And, and, then, then, we're, and then we're just like, oh, huh. oh, huh. Ah. Yeah. That took a sharp left turn. <laughs> yeah. 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 Woo. Pedro did not need no no and then I thought it took another uh, surprise turn like minutes later when the the blind dead like chop Roger's arm off and all of a sudden I mean like that was like because I expected I don't know because like maybe just the way that right. like we're used to the characters disappearing at the end of horror movies <clears throat> the uh, Pedro's girlfriend is still alive so yeah. usually it's Pedro goes she goes. Then Roger and Bet, you know, are the last two. And then right. maybe you got a 50 50 shot that Roger will make it or not. But Roger actually gets killed like no. he's up next. Yeah. No. Yeah. He does not die. The girlfriend dies. And okay. then Roger's yeah, laying there dying. No. Yeah, but he loses no. an arm. Roger's laying there <laughs> dying. Shocking. Talking it to is Bet. Shocking. <laughs> yeah. While like, the well, other girl is getting killed. At some yeah. point, she'll okay, knock so her technically, away and open the door. <laughs> technically. Yeah. All right. So he does die second Colin. to last. Oh, All right. it's within seconds of yeah. each other. But yes. But that was kind of like, oh, shit. Like, get in. Like, at the last second, she's knock her away, and then she's like, oh, come in, Roger. Please get out of there. But no, he's like, fuck, he loses okay. his arm. When he's laying there dying, and he's like, don't speak. That's the only way you'll survive. When uh, did they figure that out? Did I miss that? I, what, think, what, the I think the professor told him prof- that, yeah, like, the, oh, the, the legend is they use their hearing. Yes. The professor said, whatever. I don't know. Pedro's dad. 
<laughs> yeah, it's his right. father. Yeah. Is it his father? Yeah. yeah. It is. Oh, yeah. it is. Oh, I'm, I, like, I, I missed that. The cop comes to see him and is like, where's your son now? And oh, yeah, damn. That's, that's when we find oh, out about Pedro. the son of the professor that's because they, yeah, they think that the professor, knowing all this stuff or being a student of it, has passed this on to his son, and that's why the son is using uh, the legend of the mm-hmm. blind dead to keep people away from his criminal enterprise. He did not teach him. Well, he must have, he said something like that's why I was waiting he for him to him say sick like sick knife moves when uh, <laughs> when the guy comes up to him and is like or Roger comes up to Pedro and he's like, have you been, you know, using the legend of the Templar Knights to keep up away? I was expecting him to go like, no, but that's a good idea. I should do something <laughs> like that, you know, but he's just like, oh, that. So it's like I think he had been doing something circulating yeah. the legend sure. in order to keep, you know, the uh, authorities off of his track or just, you know, the average. I guess so. What the village. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe only like patronize that castle during the day. So he never had to run into anybody. Right. That would make more sense. As yeah. far as like him never running, like maybe using that legend to keep people away from that area. But only like because he was there during the day. Yeah. He never ran into anybody during the night. Because if he did, he'd be dead because they would have got him. Because they come up uh, during the night. Obviously. Mm-hmm. And he has no fighting skills whatsoever. He just trips over shit and gets <laughs> eaten. No, that's the fucking thing. Nobody in this goddamn movie has any fighting skills. They don't fight back. These things are really slow uh, as shit. Uh, they they, no, hit, they no, hit the one Ryan, with a stick. Ryan. <laughs> they hit the one with a stick. <laughs> a stick. <laughs> she poked at it through the door. <laughs> yes. yeah, she's true. in there no, in terror. Nobody fights these back. Things. These things are slow as shit. Shit, and also, nobody yeah, fights back. She bet runs runs through all of them at the end of this, which nobody else thought she's to do. She's being quiet. But they she's can't running. Find her. But she's running. They can't hear them. her Like footsteps? anybody could have decided no, to like run away at any point. They can hear her heart. It's like Night of the Living Dead. She yes. says like they're so slow. It's like you could run away from them. Yeah, they're they so might follow slow. you on horses, but you could run away from them. But at any the point. horses are very slow as well. Yes, so we went over this. Everything but is they slow. have eyes, so they can they can find you. They will find you. Though there is a hesitant moment where they are following Bet and they're just like, well, what's going on? What's no, everyone is so goddamn slow in this movie. Nobody does shit. <laughs> no, run. It drives run. me crazy. Even at even at the end with the train, they're watching them come towards and he's like, hurry, son. Hurry. And he's not helping at all. Well, to be fair, Bet's Bet not, is helping not helping very herself much either. No, oh, she's not She's helping gone either. to dead weight at that point. Yeah. They're trying to get her on board the train. She's... <sighs> And the blind dead are coming over the ridge. And then they get on the train, which I thought was great. Because I'm like, well, yeah. It's like you see them going That's after Bet, but they actually are getting on the, through the caboose. And they're just kind of <laughs> shuffling through shuffling the cars, there, killing people. Uh, yeah. And then there's that other taboo breaking oh moment. Spraying blood all over a small child. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> they're eating yes. the mother, and that the blood is, oh. is just pouring all over That's, this poor I'm little say, girl. Say, That's Dude. wonderful. That's wonderful. <laughs> that was fucking disturbing. It's, it is disturbing. Yeah, That's wonderful. I've never seen that before. You, no, you, just. You don't just blood <laughs> splashing on a child. Well, then it was like they cut and that back child to did it. not look like it. No, knew what was that happening. child did not know what was going on. <laughs> just at why all. are they pouring corn syrup on my head? <laughs> oh god! And then they eat the child later too. I think there was they a little, little, like little, they a do, hand yes. appears and yeah, yes, my child. And then the the but that was where we were trying to figure out like how the, the train got moving again. But apparently somebody must have tripped. A, this is a shot that's missing, right? Yes. Yeah. That somebody tripped the uh, brake and the train goes and pulls right. into the station. I mean, I'm, from what I'm guessing <laughs> is that from my engineering when, background, I'm when guessing. they pull the, the father train conductor off, he must have been right. holding yeah. onto it. Sure. That's why then there's they, blood on yeah, the brake. That's right. why there's blood on the brake is that's what I'm getting. Yeah, that's actually I would agree legit. With that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It yeah. just was maybe not shot in a way that we could see him. <laughs> Him. Right, the geography or, you know, maybe, of that scene is not clear. <laughs> maybe they could have done a close up of the break getting released again. Right. I don't know. Something. Right, they went back and shot inserts of the the bloody after he touched the uh, break, the bloody hand. Yeah. Why couldn't they shoot an insert of the? Now, was there something mentioned about whether they do this? Whether they're supposed to do this in the daytime because it was daytime when they were still up and about. At certain mm-hmm. points, very daytime. Very I know they're daytime. shooting day for night at this point, but it yeah. is very daytime. I think the end point. of the movie takes place they, like dawn has when broken. They right. in, when they pull into the station, it's yeah. like full on morning. Right. They so get to night, it at some point, night but. doesn't affect the blind. They just generally yeah. prefer it. <laughs> <laughs> Right, it's a personal there's, there's, choice. Yeah. <laughs> They're not vampires. They're yeah. fine. The yeah. sun doesn't hurt. Right. That's when yeah. one of the blind that comes up is like, "Well, it's more of just a guideline than a rule." <laughs> it's like we can be out during the day. Uh huh. That's, That's just like, when they get tired, right? Just like well, we, we 
Oh, it's a nice, like, like, uh, like a little apocalyptic ending, which I also wasn't expecting from a movie of this vintage that, you know, now the blind dead have been carried through yeah. modern technology, <laughs> you know, the train away from their home and to, I suppose they've gone back to where are we Lisbon, Lisbon, they got or to Lisbon. Madrid, wherever the hell that they ended yeah, up. I don't know yeah. where they are. And they're getting off the, uh, you know, they're continuing to spread their influence. I know the end of the print that we watched, I think was a composite <laughs> where they used stills or something. Cause it looks the like they ran out of changed. film. Yeah. I think something got cut. So that we they ran out of film and just, we're going to, you know, pull focus on this uh, picture. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I wanted much them screening. the nice to get off the train, like wearing like, Businessmen from the 1950s, like they have a hat and a briefcase, like, well, I'm going to work now. I shall see you later. I still say it was a missed opportunity that when the train started going, one of them should have been wearing a conductor's hat and steering the train. Right. Just like, <laughs> yeah. Flaps one In the on. Monty yes. Python version of yes. uh, Tunes yes. of the Blind Dead. I really no. saw this going Monty Python this, at the end of it. This whole <laughs> movie, I kept waiting for those monks to be walk around and like hit themselves in the face, like in Monty Python. Oh. Every time they showed them. Wow. No. Is Monty Python has trained you to see. Te- the, the monks or Templars doing that all the time? The they ruined it. The now you can't girl, go yeah. back and see. Yeah. Well, comedy. When they got to the train, ruining movies. When they got to the, the train, train, that's when like, the comedy no. element was like, we kind of expected it. Yeah. Well, it yeah. felt like it should be there. Yeah. Warranted or bit. not. Well, this movie was followed by three sequels. Three se- what happens in these three sequels? D- does, does it expand it, on the fact like, that people become zombies? Yeah, what does happens, it, Does Colin? it pick up from have the train station? These? I have not watched ah! them. Uh, well, I watched a little bit of the second one, which is The Return of the Evil Dead. Uh, what? That's what, what it's called. Return of the Evil Dead. How is it a sequel? They're having a... Uh, well, the blind dead just kind of show up. I think like there's a little bit of, uh, you know, they in each episode, they reiterate the origin story and you get to see a flashback, which is now reshot. I think. Oh, no, say, do they reshoot it or they recut it from this movie? I think they re- the, the one I saw, it looked like it was reshot. OK. And then um, there's they're having like a celebration. Some town is having a celebration, I think, and celebrating the day the Templars died or something. And then they come in and kill everybody in the. The third one is called the Ghost Galleon, which these people uh, pirates find <laughs> a ship, the drift, ah, and they get on oh, the ship, and the shit. ship has the blind dead on them, on it. I think they're models or something, photographers and models. They find on a pleasure cruise. Ah, they find okay. Naturally. And then the fourth one is called Night of the Seagulls, and I'm sorry to say, <laughs> I'm sorry, I what? don't know the plot the line of, of that one. Night is this seagulls? like? Does this go way back to the origin? These are the seagulls that pecked out their eyes. We can uh, hope, who, but who knows? probably not. We can hope. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to assume no. I'm sure I looked this up at some Are point, but my memory seagulls? is following me. Uh, or yes. failing me. Yes, probably. Blind. So. Night of the Blind Seagulls. So it's, so it's the birds mixed with this movie. Right. I don't think so. And I AIDS. And AIDS. Creeping around. <laughs> oh, I thought you dead, said AIDS. I'm like, wow, life. that seems oh, odd God. to have Sean, to mix no. AIDS into that. <laughs> Apes. Apes makes more sense than AIDS. Yep. Yeah. And that's it for, for, <laughs> the, for the Tomb of the Blind Dead. Uh, unless you have any random stray thoughts. I think so. I think every crazy thing the characters did in this movie we covered pretty well. I yeah. mean, there was just a lot wandering, of wandering. wandering so that's around. why yeah. maybe the plot synopsis seems concise because there was yeah. just a lot of wandering. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. yeah. A whole lot of just walking. I think we pretty much hit everything. Reading. All right. Well, then we'll have to summon our mail guy. So, Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Are they, are those the guys we just watched tonight? Are they relatives of yours? You guys seem to share a resemblance. No? Yes? We're, Igor? He didn't. (laughs) And there he goes. He doesn't like that. Uh, Igor brings us the mail. You. Uh, you can get a hold of us, and we hope that you do by writing to us through our Facebook page, www.facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show, or on there Twitter at Sat Freak Show, or by email, Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. Write to us, and we'll read your Please. comments on the air. All of them. We will read all of them. Yeah. Tonight, about no matter what, <laughs> good, bad, indifferent. <laughs> Tonight about Tombs of the Blind Dead. Michaela writes in. Oh, Michaela. Michaela. And she Michaela. says, hey, guys, and Ryan, hope you weren't having too much fun without me. No. Did you guys know the star of this movie, Lone Fleming, starred in a 1973 <laughs> movie called Sexy Cat? 
Ooh. That sounds like some freak show material. I think so. I it want to know what Sexy like Cat is material. about now. Is it anything like uh, Cat People? No, oh. I want to know which one was Lone. Le- yeah, Lone. Right, right. Which one was Lone? Is that, that Roger? Bet. Was Bet. Bet? Uh, Lone is a, is a girl's name. Lone. Yeah. Is it, uh, is it uh, Roger is Cesar. Right? Okay. Is it Cesar oh, that makes something? sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah Cesar. Oh, Lone Cesar. is, uh, yeah, Bet. And, Lone. Uh, is, it, is it Lone or Lone? Don't know. I <laughs> don't. You just got Lone Fleming. Yeah, it's a little something. It's a cool name, though. Lone Lone. Fleming. Lone. Lone. Yeah. Sexy Cat is about a film crew making a movie about a comic book strip character, the sexy cat, when they start getting killed one by one by an unseen assailant. Is it Spanish? Is it Italian? What is it? It is Spanish, Ooh. although Lone herself is Dutch. Oh. And yep. made a bunch of movies in Spain. Okay. Yeah. It's on YouTube, Sexy, Sexy Cat. Cat, but I could not find a subtitled or dubbed version. So if you know you're Spanish, you're set. Which you we go. clearly don't. We don't. So. Uh, Bobette Giorgi writes in and Bob. said, this movie was awful, except for those very cool zombies. I did like them. Uh, <laughs> about our Night of the Demons episode, Nick Hammond writes in and says, he's correcting us here, mm-hmm. Hull House is in Chicago, and it's very much haunted, with the Devil Baby being one of the biggest hauntings in Chicago. I gotta look this up because I've never heard anything about this. I have. Have you? There's mm-hmm. a devil baby at Whole House. I've heard. I I don't know the full story, but yes, I've heard of it. All right, I'm gonna look this up. All right, I'm curious now. Uh, Dom Cree says Night of the Demons. He says uh, so. Th- I guess this is payback for me making you guys watch Dead Heat. We like Dead Heat. No, you know what, Dom? No, I don't think Dom listens. He he does. He doesn't listen. Obviously, did you listen to the episode? Come on, Dom. I don't we think, all I think Dom had comments so on all fun. our episodes. It yeah. does not listen. Come on, Dom. We had so much fun with Dead Heat. That was like one of our favorite episodes. We love Dead Heat. That was fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, he also says uh, if it wasn't for the music and the special effects, I'd be giving this movie less than two exploding lover boy eyeballs out of five. Stooges one liners were very much Joe Piscopo esque as well. Cringe worthy. And it didn't help that I couldn't stop thinking that Stooge was a live action version of Bebop from TMNT, mm-hmm. where even now, guys, no more torture. Exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. Listen, I disagree I with that everything he that? said. What was that last sentence? Uh, we're even now. We're even now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mark Packard writes in and says Return of the Living Dead is Linnea Quigley's best movie. Okay. Mm-hmm. And MF Mad on Twitter writes in and says, uh, this is not about Night of Demons. He just says, I know you really don't do requests, but has anyone ever seen Troll? Yes. Troll. I have not seen Troll. I have it at home. There you go. Is it awesome? Word on it's the street is that it sucks. It's pretty bad. It's not quite as bad as Troll 2. I mean, but Troll 2 bad. is apparently the worst. Uh, the main character's name is Harry Potter. Which is kind of fun. Oh, oh no. That's kind of fun. Oh, no. Wow. Yeah. What year was Troll made? 86. Before Harry Potter. Oh, was wow. Written. Yeah. Interesting. I guess, I mean, that's like John Smith over in England, right? Is it? Harry Harold Potter. Potter. Harold Potter. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't uh, know. Troll is an American movie. It takes place in, oh, it's Italian. Uh, Troll 2 is Italian. Troll sure. 2 is Italian. Troll yeah. 1, I'm pretty sure, is American. Oh, all right, then. I'm not positive on that. So there you go, MF Mad. Oh, got to close the thing. Hopefully that's your name. <laughs> yes, MF Mad, motherfucking Mad. Yep. So uh, who knows? Maybe one day on the freak show, troll. You never can. Tell. Maybe Man, we pick some. Who knows? Shit. Who knows? But now we're gonna find out what everybody thought of Tombs of the Blind Dead with our final wrap ups, and then we'll tell you what we're watching next week. Uh, first up is me. Wait. Sean. Who are you? I'm Sean. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sean. I said it'd be cooler if you shouted it. I at can't the top shout of every time, guys. Somebody else has got. Once my turn, somebody else shouted me. Okay, you're the shouter. I think we're just going to start <sighs> pointing like Q. Uh, you're going to have to because I'm going to forget. That okay, it was, uh, I have to shout. Uh, no, me. Um, uh, uh, tombs of the blind dead. Uh, there were tombs. They were blind. They were dead. Like we said. Um, truth and advertising. Truth and advertising. Um. This, I mean, it was just, I was, it was a conf- confusing movie, but it was kind of confusing in a good way when it started out. It's just like, what, you're just kind of in wonderment about what is happening in this movie and the people that are uh, uh, interacting with each other. Um, the things I did like about this movie, I like the, the blind dead. Um, I thought they were pretty creepy, that first scene where they are waking up and uh, coming after... Um, uh, uh, Virginia, Virginia. Uh, I thought it was actually pretty cool. I like the just the slow 
walking and you know the design, their movements and everything. I thought it was pretty good. I liked it. It's there's something about that where it's not just um or it's just the slow things coming at you. It's scary to me. So I like that. I like the designs. Um there's a lot of this movie that just doesn't kind of make sense to me. Um just, you know, uh wandering around for 20 minutes of Virginia. Um, the rape scene comes out of nowhere. It doesn't mean anything to the movie. So, I mean, that obviously doesn't help it. Um, characters just kind of doing things. Uh, so it's a, it's a very weird movie. I did enjoy the ridiculousness of it because it is a ridiculous movie and what these characters do jumping off a train and just wandering off and what have you. A lot of it doesn't really make sense. Um, I I wasn't bored by it. I, I, I mean, I enjoyed the absurdity of it until it got to, like, you know, uh, certain scenes. And, and uh, I th- you know, the ending, like we said, was cool when the the the, uh, the blind dead just hop on the train and go off to town. So, I mean, there are elements of this movie that I did enjoy. And I think are it's, they're kind of worth seeing. Like, you know, a movie called Tombs of the Blind Dead. It's just like, oh, uh, maybe I should see that. And, ah, I don't think it does enough. To recommend the movie. I don't know. It's got a few good parts. I don't think the the I don't think it adds up to something that you have to see. So I would pass on Tombs of the Blind Dead. It's got some good parts, but all in all, I think I would pass on it. Yeah. Um uh, yeah, I kinda gotta agree with you there, Sean. I the like Ryan said earlier, the pieces are there. Like for for a potentially good plot. And I did enjoy the actual blind dead. The, the concept, the character, the creature concept was, was good. Um, but there's too many plot holes. There's way too many plot holes. It's, it's too confusing to watch. Um, I mean, you're, we watched it in subtitles. So you're already kind of, you can't have that many holes with subtitles. I mean, I know it wasn't designed necessarily to be that way, it was, it's a Spanish movie, but, um, yeah, it's just, it, it left, it left too many questions, left me wanting more answers, and I was, more answers and less rape. God, so much less rape, and so, <laughs> <laughs> and so much more fighting back, these people did not fight back, they were so slow, and they just stood there, and it drove me crazy, I'm sorry. It drives me up the fucking wall. Paralyzed with fear. No, it drives me up the fucking wall. Frozen with fear. Mm. But but they weren't. Somebody did yell freeze at one point in this movie. She did yell freeze. Freeze! That is But they weren't (laughs) frozen. She'd like stand there and then like wander around a pillar and still stand there. And it drove me crazy. (laughs) She did just wander. (laughs) She did. (laughs) She did. It drove me crazy. She wandered around a pillar. Oh, that's wonderful. So yeah, I, I had more fun dissecting this movie than actually watching it. So I got to say that you're probably not missing much if you pass on Tombs of the Blind Dead. Um, yeah, interesting, but not interesting enough to recommend. Sorry, Ryan. Uh, well, I mean, like it's already been said, I really enjoyed the idea of this movie. Like the mythology and everything was very cool mm-hmm. with the whole satanic knights and shit and. I love the idea. Yeah, the idea. You know, sacrificing virgins to get immortality and shit. It was cool. Always a solid <laughs> idea, sacrificing yeah. virgins. Always. Yeah. It's always um, a good place to start. Yeah. But building blocks. It yeah. just I think other parts of it could have been expanded more, like why Virginia became a zombie and nobody else <laughs> became a zombie that we saw. That's your big sticking point, isn't it? Yeah, I really want to know why the <laughs> hell that bitch became a zombie. That's the big zombie. sticking point of the movie. <laughs> I want to know. It, it, you're, you're right. So it now is there a train full of zombies at the end of the movie? What happened? That's a good question. Yeah. Sequel. Oh, shit. Uh, um, there's there's a sequel that they doesn't address it. Yeah, yeah. They don't answer any of the questions. No. no. One of them's called the Seagulls or whatever. <laughs> so it's not answering any goddamn questions. <laughs> no, no. That's, that's a, that, not, that makes me ask that's more. That's a nature document from this point. That's good. Night of the Seagulls. Um, <laughs> I'm going to Google a synopsis. So oh, it's worse than Night of the Lepus, Colin. Honest, Let me honestly, watch that I movie. Think... I, I didn't mind the movie. I thought it was fine. Um, it probably wouldn't be one that I would, yeah, be like, oh, you guys have to see this. Mm-hmm. But if you want to have some beers and laugh at ridiculous Spanish people, it's <laughs> it's fun. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. 
Uh, shit, I haven't gotten there yet. It sounds like, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, a young Are doctor you a and his What's wife <laughs> move into a primitive coastal town oh, where every seven years the undead Templars rise from the sea for seven nights and demand the sacrifice of a young maiden. Oh. Knight of the seagulls. Why couldn't it be called like the night? Oh. So they were a little Seven flexible. Knights of the Seagulls. Yeah. That, but you spell Knights K N I G H T S. They weren't Seven that Knights clever of the Seagulls. in 1975 or yeah. whenever the hell. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. Um, you know, I mean, this is a, I, I found this movie through the. Uh, I mean, it's from, you know, we're watching the cut that Blue Underground put out on video. And when they. Pardon me. They, when they announced that you know they were putting out all four of them, I'd never heard of this series prior to uh, to that release, and so I think at the time, you know, I mean, you read the genre press, you know, stuff, Fangoria, Rue Morgue, and all these folks, and they kind of, you know, it seems like all of a sudden all of them have, are, oh yeah, have Blind Dead we've been familiar with for years. And I'm like, well, I'm a horror aficionado, and I've never heard of these people, and I think there was also at that point in time. So this is like what the late to late two thousands, maybe that they were putting all this stuff out. And then there seemed to be this rediscovery of like grindhouse cinema and drive in cinema, all this stuff coming out from something weird video and anchor Bay. And it was for me as a horror fan, it was a very exciting time because like I thought I'd seen, you know, pretty much or sampled pretty much everything that was out there. And then all of a sudden there was this exposure to these like, fucking movies uh you know like from all corners of the world that you're like pff, you know i never and in these uncut editions also i mean like the beyond was like a notable one that i found in this period of time where like we only knew it here is the seven doors of death right and then oh, here comes the beyond uncut and it's like you know this this thing i mean i really enjoyed that film so this was kind of on that deep dive right mm -hmm. i saw a lot of stuff and i still continue <laughs> i mean i've got the bug for the horror films uh, I go exploring in uh, off the you beaten do, path you and deep dive <laughs> uh, yeah. in horror movies. Oh yeah, because that to could, your detriment or not, you do it because that would be like now I got to see more movies of yeah. Armando yeah. D'Osorio, you know, and you go down that road or more Spanish horror films or you know how many you know because Jess Franco, the other Spanish filmmaker, also the other. A, another Spanish only filmmaker. <laughs> well, I mentioned last week, but in case you weren't listening to that show, you're into Spanish horror movies of this period of time. You have to look up the work of Paul Nashi because Scream Factory has got a uh, Paul Nashi, Nashi collection coming out. But that guy was in, uh, inspired by Universal horror movies, and he made like all these movies where he was Dracula, Frankenstein, and, and famously uh, a werewolf character named Valdemar Daninsky that he played 13 fucking times in the middle, which beats out like everybody else who's ever played one character over well, in horror films. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> uh, if it for was that 13, length of yeah. Time. Yeah. yeah. Um, otherwise, Robert England and uh, Doug Bradley are tied. I think for like how many? Uh, I think it's at nine. Nine. Yeah. 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 So it's quite a few. I mean, you know, the movies aren't necessarily good, but just the dedication to, over wanting to do this. Um, so, yeah. So in there, in, in goes, this. Right? Yeah. In this <laughs> sure. deep dive, I encountered the tombs of the blind dead. And I actually like it better on this viewing, watching it with you guys. I was more. Like sometimes, like, you know, I've tried to watch this where I just kind of, I don't know, late at night or whatever, and it's kind of slow, then I'm going to fall asleep. Tonight, it was like awake and picking up every single nuance. And it was like the movie made complete and total sense with, I think, the big sticking point they were all hanging up on, <laughs> which is why Virginia comes back to life. So it's either you buy that and say, like, okay, she's been infected by bad black magic voodoo. And so she returns to life and it's a one off. You know, whatever the fuck, because it leads to a fairly cool horror set piece, which I really like, you know, with the, just the way that it's shot and executed. It's creepy. Yeah. You know, her stalking around, you know, in the mannequins or whatever is creepy. Um, you can almost see that set piece coming. You're just like, ah, I see what they're doing. Yeah. But I, well, I was kind of hoping that they were like going to so time I this out. So like, the whole time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, when the, when the light would go <laughs> out, really that's what I was wondering. You know, that they were going like, to time it to the light going out. So yeah. like when she would walk past the light would be out and she'd be that standing there with expecting. the mannequins. That, yeah. That's what I thought. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, 
But I think it does have like several directorial flourishes, which are different than the some of the, several of the other movies that you see, you know, from this time period. So it's not really, it's not really a cheap movie. I think it was fairly tightly written. Uh, as far as like, you know, watching it this time, I'm like, you know, all the character dynamics were working for me. And then the thing where I think it's not, uh, I think it's in the building of the suspense, um, where, you know, for instance, the 15 minute dialogue free scene at the beginning where, uh, Virginia's wandering around the, uh, the Abbey, it's like, now we wouldn't need to see that much to get. The, yeah, the yeah, idea yeah. of what's happening, right? But in the 70s, it's like, okay, you know, I mean, again, I, I'm not from 1972. I have no idea. You, you know, only, no, only from, <laughs> no, this is before I was born, right? Okay. Yeah, this is before any of us were born. I'm like, we watch so many movies from like 1990s on this show. I'm like, we got to find something from before any of us were born, right? Uh, so we're going back to 1972. Um, so, I mean, the only way that I'm familiar with the rhythms of these films is through, you know, other movies, you know, from movies that you've seen. Like, what am I trying to get at here? You watch Psycho now. I think Psycho, made 1960, plays good now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It yeah. still holds up because yeah. the editing rhythm that it employs has never really changed. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, it's changed, but when we speed it up with MTV kind of stuff, then Quentin Tarantino's movies come back and slow everything down again, right. but it still feels like it's they're contemporary. yeah. You know? <clears throat> so it's like those movies found that, you know, uh, mathematical rhythm mm. of editing that is timeless. So this one doesn't have that. It's, you know, more... Uh, um, it runs at a more... Uh, what free, am I trying to say? of... Yeah, no a, a slower that, pace, yeah. Yeah, basically. Um, we will cut where we want. Fuck you. That's French. But I, <laughs> I still think like Your the accents are all over the place. <laughs> all over the place. They've never been good. They've never been good. They've never been good. They're better than mine, so I'll give you that. <laughs> uh, mine, you always sound like Mexican. You, you, you always sound yeah. Italian, always. <laughs> or, uh, so, uh, I yeah, thought it was Mexican easy. when I was trying Italian, but yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this was like a cool, the monsters were cool. I thought they were creepy, creepy looking, you know, the, the, the chanting, the noise, the, the soundtrack score or whatever, which sounds like a bunch of like, you know, the Gregorian chant from hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was keenly listening to that this time too. It's like the sound design on this movie really does help a lot. Uh, because I think like if you were just kind of watching these things move in slow motion, you know, it wouldn't necessarily do anything, but like having this like really freaky, you know, you know, stuff on the soundtrack and the the chains clanking or whatever the fuck the noise is. Yeah. It's like it's a really moody and atmospheric sound. It's a moody and atmospheric movie. Uh, um, you know, I don't know the 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 pros outweigh the cons for me uh, because I think like the first. You know, the whole the first segment, at least until Virginia gets off the train, uh, you know, is like this is a decent way to start a movie because I'm intrigued on like what's going on and, you know, how these characters are going to solve this. And then even to the end of, uh, you know, her the suspense sequence, hunting Virginia, meeting the blind dead, you know, all kind of works. And then I think the end sequence, once everybody gets to the um, the Abbey again and starts getting picked off by the blind dead all the way to the train. Like that stuff works. It's in the middle somewhere that it's like the elasticity of the editing starts to go like, okay, you know, it's like, where are we? We got to go meet this guy and meet that guy before yeah. we come back. And, you know, we're going to go, you know, back to the Abbey again and kind of kickstart this. Cause I'm like the blind dead really only show up twice yeah. in yeah. the movie yeah. <clears throat> at the beginning. And then again at the end. Yeah. So, uh, it feels a little, you know, loose in the middle, which could be tightened up or whatever. I mean, it seems like this is like a good, you know, if the Spanish wanted to go and, you know, remake a culture, something of cultural significance, because apparently this was a box office, you know, success. It warranted two more or three more sequels. And, uh, you know, now there's fan art and, you know, it's there's bands that have music videos featuring the characters and uh, song lyrics, I think, from somebody that I was reading. Um, so it's uh, I think they should go and remake it, which I think would be kind of interesting to see these characters brought back into the. Uh, that would be a cool remake. I would, yeah, that'd yeah. be all right. 
Some movies are worth remaking. It's movies like this that are worth remaking. Yeah, yeah. I think so, right? Because yeah. you could update this. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really? Without Absolutely. offending a bunch of people who are like, no, the first one's perfect. I right. agree that it's not perfect. Right. It yeah. is a it is there a, are opportunities. a product of 1972. It's not like Psycho. Psycho's mm-hmm. perfect. This one yeah. had, could use some work. Yeah, yeah, it's shit like this on this list that we need to start remaking. It's like, all right. Yeah. yeah. Well, this yeah. is, there you go, listener. Put uh, this one down as like, hey, we wouldn't be against like a remake of yeah. The Tombs of the Blind Dead. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would recommend it. But again, I'm saying, you know, this is to the aficionados of Euro horror. And if you're into Euro horror or you're just getting your feet wet, it's like, yeah, I mean, you want to check this one out. I think it's one of the, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, a decent one. It's maybe not one of the best, but it's far from one of the worst. It's not boring. And it has some good ideas and uh, it keeps delivering even up until the end. So I would recommend The Tombs of the Blind Dead. And I've talked for way too long. So (laughs) next week, we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by Sean. What are we watching next week? All right. We are going to watch Escape from L.A. Oh, we've been talking about that. Yeah. We're going to watch Escape from L.A. All right. Since they just announced they were going to make remake Escape from New yeah. York. We'll talk about it. All right. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, Freaks. And we hope you'll join us then. And until then, the bass.